Hey everybody, it's Boo Ray Perry from Tampa, Florida, and today we are going to talk about the dynamic range settings on Fuji cameras. We're going to talk specifically about my camera, which is the Fuji X100V, but they have this same dynamic range setting on all Fuji cameras, or at least most of the Fuji cameras, and it's kind of tricky to understand. Uh, and um, I'm going to try and really just lay it out for you, explain it to you in a way that you can understand, and then I'm going to tell you how I use it, and hopefully that'll help you figure out if you want to use it too. And before we get started, don't forget to check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. I also have a group on Facebook. I'd love for you to join it. It's called Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. And if you are interested in any of the gear that I carry, from my cameras to my attachments, for instance, this is the wide-angle lens attachment that you can get for the Fuji, which I love and, and I'm kind of addicted to now, and I never take it off my camera. <laughs> If you're interested in any of the stuff I carry, even my straps and you name it, it's all on my website. And you can look in the links in the description and get a link to everything that I use. And if you buy it, I get a little bit of, you know, maybe a dollar or something. And it helps me to keep this channel alive. Okay. The dynamic range setting on the, on the Fuji cameras. Let me bring it up real quick on my camera and see if I can get into the camera. So we can just, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about right here. Can you see that? Right there. You see it says... 100%, 200%, and 400%, right? And auto. There's also an auto setting. So what does this do, and is it worth it? Well, first, let's talk about how it works, and then we'll take a look at some images, and we'll see exactly how it affects your images, and then we'll do a conclusion. All right? All right. So first, here's how it works. Now, before we get started on the details of how this works, it's important to remember that when it comes to digital photography, it is easier to make an image brighter and save the details and have the image still be usable than it is to make the image darker. So if you're in post-processing and you've got to kick an image up, that is going to give you a better result than if you have to kick the image down. See, in, in, in digital photography, we have to shoot for what we call the highlights. We have to save the highlights in the exposure and then we can recover the shadows and post-processing. In the days of film, it was the other way around. In the days of film, you had to shoot for the shadows and then you could recover the highlights. Uh, so older photographers had a little bit of a learning curve when they switched to digital because it was the opposite. But for us, you have to shoot for the highlights because if you lose the highlights in the original file, you can't recover them. There's nothing to recover. But if you have the shadows too dark in the original file, often you can boost it up and recover detail in those shadows. So your highlights are the most important thing when you're talking about trying to get more dynamic range in a digital camera. Okay, so the way the DR setting works in the Fuji cameras is that there are four different levels. Uh, first is auto, which we'll talk about last. The second is uh, DR100, and that's just standard DR. That's where the, the, the camera isn't doing anything special for you. Then there's 200, and then there's 400. Now, how this affects your shooting is that if you are using DR100, the lowest ISO that you can use is 160. Now, if you're using 200, the lowest ISO you can use is 320. And if you are losing 640, or rather, if you're using 400, DR400, the lowest ISO you can use is 640. Okay, let's take a look at two pictures that I shot, and we can really get a close-up view of the effect that these settings have on your photograph. So the first picture was shot at uh, DS100, which means that there's there's no special tricks being done in the camera. You shoot at ISO 160 or at any ISO, and that's exactly the ISO that you get in the image. And then the second image was shot at ISO 640, and I had the DS setting to 400%, because 640 is the lowest ISO you can use when you are using DS 400%. So I, I, I took the same picture, and I just turned my ISO to 640, which of course made my picture very much brighter. So then I had to also raise my shutter speed to get back to the correct exposure. So here's the first picture shot at ISO 160 and DR100. And then here's the second picture shot at ISO 640 and DR400, which is required. You cannot shoot an image at DR400 and ISO 160. The camera won't let you do it. You have to do it at 640 or higher. All right, so what's the difference? Well. Just looking at the pictures uh, at this size, you probably don't see much of a difference. But if you look here at the sky, this is where you're going to notice it. Because the highlights, the whole purpose of using this setting is to recover more detail in your highlights and the bright areas of your image. So let's zoom in to 100%. Now look here in the light above the trees. You see how it's very blue up here and then it starts to go more light here and more white. Now this is the one that was shot at DR100. Now watch what happens when I switch to DR400. Do you see there's a little more blue here? 
right? There's a little more blue in this area. And the reason is because this image was actually shot two stops darker and then recovered. And everything was recovered except for this part. So you get more detail in the whites. And that's what DR400 or DR200 can do for you. Now comes the drawback. Look at the top of the image. Let's go here. Look at the noise. I, I hope you can see it on, on YouTube. But if you can't, I can. And there's a little bit of noise up here when you're at DR100 and 160. And then when you go to DR400 and 640, there's a lot more noise. Let me zoom in a little bit. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit bigger. Let me go like to 400%. And then maybe you'll be able to see the noise. Let's uh, take it to 100. Uh, no, no, no. Let's take it to fit and view, right? And we'll zoom in here. And then we'll go to 200. And now maybe you can see it a little bit better. So you see the noise? This is, this is at 160 DR100. And this is at 640. DR400. Of course, there's a setting in between. There's You can shoot at DR200 and you'll get less noise in here and, and more noise in here. <laughs> right? I'll leave it to you to, to make a guess on that or do your own experience. But, but I wanted to go from one extreme to the other so we could really see the effect. So here you go. This is the amount of noise you get at 160 and this is the amount of noise that you get at 640. So you are recovering highlights, but you are going to add some noise and some grain to your image. Okay, so we know why it exists, we know what it does, we know the pros and the cons of using it, which brings us to the final question, what do you do, Boo-Ray? Because I know that you're watching this video because you really want to know what I do. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing, and, and just bear with me on this. The main purpose of using this mode is to recover highlights, areas that are too bright. The situations that you find yourself in where areas of the image are too bright are also the situations where you need to use the lowest ISO available so that you can cut down on the amount of light coming into the camera. You follow me? You understand what I'm saying? If I'm shooting a dark reception, right? If I'm shooting a dark wedding in a dark church, well, then I can have this DR, DR at 400, no problem, because I'm going to be shooting this really dark place, and I'm going to have my ISO up around 1600 anyway. But if I'm shooting in a dark place, there probably aren't a whole lot of highlights to recover, right? The highlights I want to recover are the ones when I'm shooting at the beach, when it's really, really bright. And when I'm shooting at the beach, I don't want to shoot at 640 ISO, because I'm trying to cut down the light that gets into my camera. I want to shoot at ISO 160, plus there's the grain issue, right? Why have all that extra grain when you don't need all that extra grain? So the truth is, it's not super handy for me. Now, I will say this, there are places you can be shooting that are dark where it does help. Like for instance, uh, you're shooting in a dark church, but there's some stained glass windows, right? So the church is dark and you've got your ISO set so you can see the church, but then the windows are blown out. Well, in that case, shooting at DR400 is going to help you because it's going to recover two stops of highlights in the windows, and that's great. So do I set it to DR400 then? No, I don't. I just keep it on auto all the time. Just keep it on auto because then the camera will do it for you, right? If you're in a situation where you want to shoot at 160, that's great. You're going to shoot at 160. If you're in a situation where you shoot north of 640, then the camera is going to automatically put you in DR400 mode. If you're in a, in a setting where you're shooting between 320 and 640, it will automatically put you in DR200 mode. So you don't have to think about it, right? So what do you do if you want to cover the highlights and you're shooting at ISO 160? Well, in that case, what you have to do is, is just do it manually. Shoot at ISO 160, right? That's your picture. Chimp it, look at it, go, ooh, I'm losing my highlights. And then shoot again at one or two stops lower. Either change your shutter speed or change your aperture so that your image gets darker. And then you can recover it later in Photoshop. But the rest of the time, just leave it in DR Auto. It'll help you every once in a while when you're in a situation where it's a very dark place, but there are some bright highlights that need to be saved. And the rest of the time, you probably won't even really use it. And you won't notice it's there anyway. So that's my solution. Use DR Auto on any Fuji camera that you have and just let Fuji do the work for you. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. Check out my gear and I'll see you back here next time.